Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video I want to show you my latest purchase from Copart. It's a 2012 Audi A8L, so it's a long wheelbase, which means that the rear passengers will get plenty of room. As you can see in here, the rear doors, they are very huge. Okay, what's the story of this car? Back in November 2021, I was at Copart uh, lot, I was checking some cars. And then I saw this car coming on a Copart trailer. I approached the car to check it. And I was telling myself, this car is a very good car and doesn't need a lot of work. Uh, I tried at that time to check further, see like the interior and other stuff. But then a Copart worker stopped me and told me, you cannot do the investigation right now because like uh, the insurance company, I think, they're still investigating whether they should salvage the car or fix it. Eventually, as you can see in here, they salvaged the car and they said not to fix it. So this car was on the auction in March 30, 2022. Yeah, so it stayed at, a Copa, at the Copart lot for November, December, January, February, or March. So it's like five months. <laughs> okay. Anyways, so I won this car. The winning bid was $6,000. I paid $7,100, so $7,100 to get the car with Copart fees, shipping, everything. So it came at $7,100. Okay, so what is the damage? Hopefully you saw where the damage is. Yes, exactly, it's in here. So there are some trim pieces that are missing and that's all the damage the car has. I mean. There are some scratches here and there, like this one here, and this one over there. But other than that, there is no any other damage other than this one in here, as you can see it. But here's the thing, guys. You might think, oh, this is like a very easy fix. I'll just like buy a trim piece, the plastic trim piece in here, and put in there, and we are done. Uh, if you are an Audi enthusiast, you should know that these things here, they are expensive. These are actually like the radars for the uh, adaptive cruise control. And there's one thing actually about this car. I'm actually surprised because it's not fully loaded, but at the same time it has all the like nice options. For example, it does have adaptive cruise control and it does have a solar roof panel, but at the same time, it doesn't have, for example, night vision. It doesn't have a uh, heads-up display. It doesn't have the matrix LED headlights. So I'm not sure what is going on with this car, but but overall, overall, the option set in this car is very nice. I really like it. So yeah, let's talk about the damage. So I think, I think what caused this damage is like slight front end collision because as you can see in here like some turn pieces they are missing and when I start the car I get three faults two faults they are actually for the same problem it said like adaptive cruise control not available and Audi guarding a brake or brake guard not available which they are both connected to this unit in here I'm not sure if the other unit is working or not of course we will be checking that in another video but that's one thing and the other thing the other uh, warning light I get is adaptive headlight I'm not sure what is wrong with these lights but as you can see they are sagging the whole front end actually is loose and sagging and you can tell like when you drive the car, you can tell that there's something wrong with the front end. All right, uh, let me show you the interior of the car. As you can see, you have curtains for the rear passengers, very big car and plenty of uh, rear passenger space in here. And this actually, this seat, I'm six feet tall, and this seat is set for my position. And as you can see, like, I have plenty of legroom. 
very nice, very nice. Uh, I didn't see this one, this one is broken. You can move it, but you can't like move it uh, horizontally. This one's working, no problems. Let's see what do we have in here. Mm, nice, nice, very nice. And what do we have in here? Oh, wow. So that means we have quad zone climate control. One for each passenger. Four passengers, one for each. Nice, very nice. Do we have something in here? No. Okay. What is that in here? Okay, I think. Wow. Nice. Alright. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think the MSRP for this car. Oh, let me show you something else in here as well. Uh, first aid kit. Yeah, nothing else. I don't think we have a fridge in here. No. Okay. I think the MSRP for this car is like around ninety thousand dollars so i bought for seven thousand dollars i mean it's not ready yet probably i'll pay thousand dollars to get it fixed but i'll fix it myself and of course i'll film that for you guys i'll show you exactly in this uh, set of videos how to buy a car from copart fix it properly and probably sell it for a profit if you want to make profit or keep it for yourself because this is a nice car it really is it's a very nice car all right so let's continue here as you can see here uh these are the controls for the curtains and also we have soft closing doors as you can see in here we do have actually massaging seats oh yeah that's one advantage of the solar panel roof at the top uh, the car is turned off, but it's recirculating the air in here so that it keeps it like not as hot as outside. So that's nice. That's really nice. So let's talk about the damage before I show you like the uh, options list. So uh, it's stuck. Yeah, it's kind of stuck in here. Let me... Ah, it's stuck. I opened it last time, but that was two months ago. <laughs> All right, let me... Let me try, let me try the hard way, I'll come back so to turns you out the problem is coming from this assembly in here. So in order to open the hood, this hook should go all the way to the left like that. But when you press this latch, it won't make this hook go all the way to the left. I'm not sure if a WD-40 will solve this issue, spraying just WD-40 around in here, but I'm pretty sure, more likely, the problem is with the spring inside is getting loose. But the good news is, it's not very hard to replace this whole assembly. It's just two screws, get another one, get two screws, and you should be done. All right, so now let's go back to the engine. So what do we have in here? In this car, we have the 4.2 natural spray V8 FSI. It's the fuel synergic injection, which is Audi's branding for their uh, direct fuel injection technology. All right. Now, some people might say, oh, I don't like this engine. I prefer the V6 supercharged one. Well, <clears throat> I don't think on 2012 A8 Audis you can get this powertrain. Because if you need to get this powertrain, I think you need to upgrade to the 2013 or later models. So for the uh, 2012, you have only, I think, two options. It's either this one or the W12. The W12, I can tell you, it's a problematic engine. And you don't get like a lot of horsepower or torque with the W12 because it's cramped. So I think the best option for these A8s is this one. So yeah. And and the good thing about this engine for the 2012, it comes, it's actually mated with the ZF8 transmission. So it's not the ZF6, not the older ones, the newer one. So you get better MPGs. I mean, you will get the best MPGs with the V6 supercharged, but I don't think you'll get the same number of horsepower as this one. 
with this one you get like 370 horsepower but with the supercharged v6 you get only 325 and the same torque you get from both engines this one and the supercharged so it's just like a little bit better mpgs that's all and i'm pretty sure a natural aspirated engine will be much better on the long run than the supercharged one it's, it will be more reliable and i tried this this engine i tried it before not the v8 but the v6 version of it because i own the 2008 audi a6 it has the v6 fsi 3.2 it was bulletproof i drove it for like 50,000 miles no issues at all no issues at all it was very reliable car okay so uh when i bought the car when i bought this car in march when i first started the engine it was smoking from this side in here but after i drove it for a while it stopped doing it so probably it's just like some humidity from these cars sitting for a very long time at copart lots so yeah but now it's not leaking at all like i'm driving the car uh once or twice a week it's not smoking it's not leaking it's not doing anything uh well audis and mercedes-benz they are like bmw's the newer ones of course uh you don't get an old dipstick in bmw you don't get even access to any like kind of like all measurement other than the electric one in the infotainment system but this one here you don't get one doesn't come with the car if you want to get one you have to buy one but at least you can check on the infotainment screen how much oil we have in this car all right okay but i'm pretty sure we have we have enough oil in it to start so yeah don't worry about this and it's my car it's not cool parts car anymore <laughs> okay so let's take a look at the damage now so as you can see here first of all this headlight is loose because the tab is broken this one is not loose because the tab's not broken and the damage in here as you can see guys i showed you the damage in here before but i want to show you something else i want to show you underneath so that's why i want to remove the whole front assembly like the front end like the uh the front bumper and probably some trim pieces at the front because we do have a lot of missing trim pieces around in here so i want to know what exactly causing these three warning lights on the dashboard so we have as i, as I told you before we have three warning lights i think two are coming because of this coming from this one here the audi adaptive cruise control and the audi brake guarding guarding brake i don't remember and the third warning light is the adaptive headlight i'm not sure if it's coming from this one or this one but i suspect it's coming from this one because this one is loose probably it's just like electrical connector or something like that but we have to check it of course and in order to do that we have to lift the car remove the front wheels and also we do have a problem with the uh, fender liners in here i'm not sure why it's like this i don't know of course guys there will be another video coming where i will lift the car remove the front wheels and i have actually to clean the brakes because there's some noise coming it when i come to a full stop there's like like eh, noise i don't like it so probably they need just some cleaning and yeah so in order to see what kind of damage we have we have to remove the front end the whole front end to see like what is going on here as you can see like there are like a lot of broken pieces up inside actually let me show you something else like take a look at this guys like <laughs> yeah like there is like an audi or something like that badge inside here that is broken and sleeking water as you can see in here like there's water it was raining yesterday that's why okay so that's where the damage is let me now show you how the engine runs it actually runs tip top no issues at all so foot and brake start the engine nice The good thing about the Audi A8, especially the ones that come with uh, solar panel roof, is that you'll never run out of battery juice. I mean, I got this car in March, and I was busy with something, 
I didn't even turn it on or even checked it for four months or three months. I checked it again in July and when I started the engine, start immediately. There was enough juice to start the engine. So this solar solar panel roof in here, it will keep the battery charged and, and while the car is turned off, if the climate is hot or something like that, then the, the, the blower fan, it will keep blowing air, circulating air inside. So that doesn't make it like very hot inside. Uh, all right. So as you can see, we have three warning lights. Uh, let me actually close the door to show you these three warning lights. Uh, they're not showing right now, but okay. How do you go and check these warning lights? Okay refuel yeah here you go guys so that's like the hood open there obviously uh, refuel uh, acc and audi braking guard unavailable and i think we do have adaptive headlight but it's not showing right now but we do have like the adaptive headlight but it's not showing right now i'm not sure why okay so and service due obviously it probably needs like uh needs to reset the oil interval or something like that so that's everything we have we do we don't have check engine light we don't have any other warning lights and yeah it's very nice and luxurious in here you do get actually heated seats and ventilated so that's pretty nice i really like it and what else as i said adaptive cruise control that's the most important feature for me and link keep warning and uh yeah yeah and blind sorry this is a blind spot and we do have link keep warning which is i think it's in here as you can see like here you see it yeah all right so what else do we have in here we do have sunglass i'm not gonna use it Let's see, what do we have in here? Wow, they are very heavy and sturdy. Nice, nice. This is for connecting your, wow. <laughs> wow, that's like the connector for iPhone 4, okay. But I do have like the connector for the USB if you want to like just connect your USB and listen to music from, flash your USB. And that's a good thing I really like about it. So they are learning from their mistakes. Uh, so the Audi A6 I owned before, there was actually electronic latch release. That Audi was involved in an accident, it was totaled of course, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get to my personal stuff in the glove box because the battery was disconnected and I couldn't open the uh, glove box. And they didn't, they didn't even let me to connect a battery or something like that to get my personal stuff. Because they said, oh, the insurance company is now owning the company and they're not allowing you to do that. So I lost my personal stuff. It wasn't something, uh, <clears throat> sorry guys. It was something like very valuable, but yeah, I wish I could get them. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I remember that this thing was at the rear glass. On the back, there are some... Uh, information of the previous owner i'm going to show it to you guys here we do have just like the user manual and nothing else you do have dvd changer you do have valet mode you activate from here what else do we have in here we do have uh covid mask we do have uh probably this is like a vaping machine i don't smoke so i'll just throw it away and this is like the um the sticker from Copart, I just removed it when I got the car. And let me actually show you. Uh, yeah, let me show you actually the Copart bill of sale. If you want to take a look at it, here it is. So the seller actually is all state. So it's an insurance company. So as you can see, I paid $6,000, that's a winning bid. The buyer fee was $750 and that's with paying with secured payment, so debit card or cash. 
and then there's entrance bid fee there's storage fee because i was late to get the car and then late payment fee so they i paid like a uh, 55 dollars extra so this was supposed to be seven thousand and thirty something not 80 but yeah and uh, delivery was 167 dollars so the total was seven seventy one hundred dollars and this is how This is how the salvage title looks like. All right, okay. So, I just wanted to show you that thing. Uh, we do have sunroof, but it's like the normal sunroof, not the panoramic sunroof. Ah, and that's one extra missing stuff. Panoramic sunroof, we don't, we don't get that on this car. It's a weird option list. Like you don't get heads up display, but you do get adaptive cruise control. You don't get matrix LED headlights, but you do get like all the driver assistant package. I'm not sure like uh, what is the option list for the 2012, but that's what you get. All right, okay. So let me now show you how the engine runs. As I told you before, it runs tip top, no issues. See it? Let me give you like a couple of revs. I like it. I like it how it cuts power, like gives like a very nice noise. Listen to that guys. Nice, very nice. As you can see, it's just steam, no smoke, no blue smoke or something like that. Yeah, as you can see, no leaks at all. So yeah, the whole thing is just cosmetic. And of course, I'll be fixing that. And here is it for you guys, the 2012 Audi A8. Actually, let me show you guys how this car looks like when you drive it when you are in the cockpit at night because like the interior lighting is real nice on these Audis but before we do that guys I would like to show you while I'm cruising right now what kind of MPG I'm getting so I'm doing right now 73 72 I'm very soft on the accelerator pedal I'm getting like around 40 so yeah as I said before, although it's a V8, first of all, it's not like a six, a six liters V8, it's 4.2, it's a small V8, and uh, it's mated with the best transmission, I think, it's the ZF8, and as you can see, that's what I'm getting for, like, minimum, minimum, it's like slightly uphill in here right now, I'm getting minimum like 30, 32 MPGs. And that's with the AC on and uh, yeah with massaging seats as well turned on <laughs> so yeah yeah that's why as I told you before I don't care if I get the V8 or the Supercharger V6 because both will get almost the same MPG now we're going a little bit more uh, uphill but still still we are in check we are on 30 MPGs keep in mind the AC is working, the massaging seats are working nicely, so that's why probably we're getting around 30. Probably if you are more conservative, you might get better MPG, but for now, yeah, that's what I'm getting for now. Now it's like uh, downhill, and yeah, now it's like almost 50, so yeah, yeah. So yeah, for now, uh, let me show you now the uh, the night view for the interior for this car because I really like it. All right, so sorry for the lighting condition, but I just want to show you the uh, lighting of the interior, how nice it is. So I just unlock the car. 
So when you unlock it, it knows that's night time and the front and rear lights actually work yeah and there are these uh, LED lights in the door handles as you can see I'm not sure guys if this is a gimmick or not is this aftermarket so does all 2012 Audis come with this with Audi or just like normal lighting because I really hate those gimmicks I don't like them but if that is like the OEM or the factory, I'm fine with it. All right, so when you get inside the car, when it's night time, all it shows is this start stop button. So but once you start it, yeah, you see, uh, the view here is very nice. And take a look at these LED lights around. I really like them. I really like them. I would like to see actually how this one here looks like. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. So it's very nice and luxurious in here. And then night time. Yeah. I think you only have three options for this lighting in here. I'm not sure about how to get them in the infotainment screen, but yeah, I believe there are three options and yeah that's how it looks like and uh, let me show you one more thing actually so i drove this car for 130 miles and the average mpg for the last trip of course was this so 15.5 15.4 so i drove it on the highway and then i drove it uh, in the downtown when I uh, came back from like the downtown to home. So I drove through downtown So that's why like the uh, average speed was three miles and the average mpg was 15.5. So But I showed you guys It was doing great. It was doing like uh, Around 30 miles when you, when you are doing 70 miles per hour and one more thing actually this car can raise and lower itself <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this. I was playing around with the uh, infotainment screen and turns out you can raise and lower so it has uh, air suspension so it can raise and lower itself. That's um, yeah, that's really nice. Let me show you how do you access that. You go I think to car and then as you can see in here there is raise button. So you just hit this one here. This and I'm not sure if you can see it. But now the car is actually, yeah, I can feel it. It's actually uh, raising itself. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you cannot see it, guys. You can't feel it, but I can feel it, actually. So it's raising itself. I think now it's done. Let me actually show you. I'm not sure if you can see this, but let me show you now how high it is. Like, yeah, unfortunately, guys. Uh, let me see if I can turn the uh, the light on. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure on this iPhone how do you turn the light on, but yeah, it's like. It's very high like now it's like it's like it's like this much now now it's like this much between the uh, body and the wheel itself so yeah so that's one thing it has air suspension and you can actually lower it now so we'll just lower it and another thing about this car I was checking around in the forums and it turns out this car can tow up to 5,000 pounds but the problem is most people they were talking about the um how expensive the tow bar is because you have to get it from somewhere in europe probably germany and it's like a thousand dollars for this tow bar but once you get it you can actually tow with this car up to five thousand pounds i'm really surprised because a bmw x5 can tow only like six thousand pounds this is a sedan it's not an suv it can tow five thousand pounds so if you have like a lightweight sports car you can like tow this lightweight sports car on with the, using this car only. <laughs> that's that's nuts. 
I really like it. I really like it. So, the plan for this car, guys, is that I'll be actually working on it next week. So, I'll upload another video. Show you how I will be uh, disassembling the front end of this car. And after fixing it, I'll drive it for a while, as usual. So, if I want to flip a car, usually I buy the car from Copart. And then I fix it. And then drive it for like a thousand miles to make sure nothing is wrong with the car. And then sell it. Offer it for sale. That's what's gonna happen with this car. But if I like it, after fixing it, driving it, if I really like it, I might keep it for myself. Because you can raise the car, so with four-wheel drive, so it's very good on the snow. It's very luxurious and comfortable. And it's not like, it doesn't get bad MPG as SUVs. And it can tow eventually, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it or not, but I'll let you know, of course, guys. But yeah, so pl please stay tuned for this car. I'll be working on it and I'll update you with a repair video soon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.